Good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man. Day two of my ride to Wingding, 2018. I'm just now leaving Greenville, Mississippi. It's about 6.35 in the morning. And I'm on my way to Alabama, where I'll spend the night, and then on Tuesday morning, head up to Knoxville. Got quite a few comments on yesterday's moto vlog, which was my day one ride from Dallas to Greenville. And um, some of you asked, or one of you asked, about the Bond armor. And this is the second day I've been wearing it. And I've <clears throat> took a couple of times, but it, now it goes on and off real easy. It really slips right on. The material is very thin, so because it, it lets air through, it's, to keep, it's designed to keep you cool when you're riding in the summer. And you just have to be careful when you put it on. You kind of pull on the armor and put it up over your knees, or if you're putting your jacket on, pull it up over your shoulders or elbows, and it goes right on. Now, yesterday I said it fits kind of tight, and I, I actually meant that when I went back and listened to what I said, you might have taken that as a negative, but actually it's a very good thing because I know sometimes when I'm wearing my Olympia jacket, the armor just kind of flops around and uh, it doesn't really, it, it feels like if I ever went down, the armor would just shove out of the way and my joints would be impacting with the uh, surface. This armor is held pretty tight against your body, so it doesn't tend to flop around like the, uh, the armor does in my Olympia mesh riding pants or my Olympia jacket. So the fact that everything kind of fits tight is actually a good thing. The other advantage is that you can wear the Bond armor pants underneath your blue jeans. So if you like riding with jeans on, but you'd like to have protection, uh, this can provide it. You know, usually in the wintertime, I wear dragon jeans because number one, they're a little bit warmer, but they also have that built-in Kevlar. Well, the Kevlar is really good for abrasion resistance, but it doesn't do anything for impact. The Bond armor, on the other hand, is just the opposite. It deals with impact protection, really does nothing for abrasion resistance other than the impact areas would be resistant to abrasion. So right now I feel like I have the best of both worlds. I have the Bond armor underneath my Olympia jacket and Olympia mesh pants, which have the Cordura, which are abrasion resistance. Of course, the best would be to have it underneath leather, but in the summertime, it's just too hot for me to wear leather. So anyway, until I do a final review, I guess that's about all I can say about the Bond armor. Now, let me give you one more little update about the Garmin 595, Zumo 595, GPS. It takes so much stress off of me having this new GPS because this is the way I like to travel. It tells me what's up ahead. It gives good, clear directions. I can lay out my route ahead of time. Some of you asked me uh, on the, you know, and you've asked me this in other YouTube videos, but you asked me last night, why not just use an iPhone with CarPlay, or why not use Waze or one of these phone-based GPS systems? That's a good question. But the problem with those systems, if all you want to do is go from point A to point B, like if I'm in a strange town, I don't know, I don't know how to get to the nearest gas station, or I don't know how to get to an ATM, an iPhone is great for that. You know, Apple Maps is fine for that. If I want to go from Dallas to Wingding and I don't want to set out a specific route, I just want to get there the fastest way, Apple iMap is a, or I, Apple Maps is a great way to do that. 
but it's going to put you on the interstate. So if you want to have control over your route, you can't use something like Google Maps or Apple Maps or one of these phone base. They're just not designed for that. They're designed for Uber drivers to get people from the airport to their home as quick as possible. They're great for that. Or if you, like I say, if you're looking for a restaurant or if you're looking for a gas station or an ATM or a bank or a post office, you know, it's fine. But for those of us who take touring seriously as far as, when I say seriously, I don't mean if you ride on the interstate, you're not serious. But people who like to take adventure routes or they like to take back roads or back highways, you have to have a GPS that you can program. You can program a route on a computer. And I don't particularly like these web-based uh, computer routing programs like Honda has its trip planner. I think it's junk. I think it's just clunky and hard to do, hard to use. Basecamp from Garmin is the gold standard that I've seen as far as routing software. You can create a route, you can add your waypoints, you can name them whatever you want, and then you can uh, export those routes to your GPS. And I, like I say, when I do my full review of the Garmin Zumo 595, I will show you step by step everything I do to create a route, put it on the Garmin, and how I use it. But one thing that's really cool about this new Garmin, I didn't have, I had a Zumo years ago before I got my 2012. I had a Zumo, a Zumo 550, I believe. Great, a great GPS, but nothing compared to this. What this has is a feature called Live Track. And it's really cool because you connect it up with your smartphone. They have an app that you download and you connect this uh, Live Track on your smartphone to the Zumo. Because remember, I have my phone connected to my Zumo via Bluetooth. And what it will do is it will send an email to anybody you specify on your contact list with a link and they can go to a website and they can tra track where you've been or where you're going. Shows them the speed, the elevation, the distance, the time you've been traveling, the whole thing. It's kind of like a poor man's version of Spot. And it's really such a cool feature. It's something that like I say, I wish Honda had integrated this technology into the, G, uh, into the Goldwing because I used it yesterday and my girlfriend and a couple of my friends, I had them send that link to and they all thought it was really cool. They were following me all day long just to see where I was. So anyway, right now, second day mini review of the Zumo is a thumbs up. I'll do a full review in the future. So, like I say, I still have to, five days left to spend with this and with the Bon Armor before I do a final review. Because things can happen two, three, four days into a trip that you didn't experience when you try something for just 20 or 30 minutes. And that's the thing about most reviews that you see, especially on the internet. People spend an hour or two with a product and they try to review it and they don't really use it in a real world situation. So I'm wearing the Bond armor for six or seven days of riding before I review it. I'm using the Zumo 595 for six or seven days before I review it. And um, just in general, I'll also say that the, the 2018 Goldwing has been very comfortable, very comfortable ride. I. Uh, of course, I had the Wingsoft seat upgrade. I had uh, John Conley rebuild the seat, and uh, it's much, much more comfortable. I can easily go two to two and a half hours without having to get off the bike. And usually after two and two and a half hours, I need a drink of water anyway, or I want to walk around, or I need to get gas, you know, all the other stuff. So it's doing its job. I love the electric windscreen. Somebody asked me yesterday, they said it looked like I had the windscreen all the way up. 
Well, this is the Honda tall windscreen. And even though it's not all the way up, you got to remember my GPS, I'm sorry, my uh, GoPro is about chin level. I've got it mounted to the chin bar of my modular helmet. So I can still see over the windscreen, even though what you're seeing, it looks like I'm looking through the windscreen because you're looking where the GoPro is. I also continue to get a lot of comments about the reflect a reflection on the dash because when the sun's up not so much now but in the middle of the day you can see all you see on the dash is my yellow jacket reflecting in the dash and there is some reflection but it's really not as bad as what you're seeing again you're seeing from chin height uh, I'm four or five inches above that what I'm seeing so it's really the angle I'm at is much better it's not the reflection is not nearly as bad now the reflection on the back of the windscreen is pretty significant seems like there's some kind of coating that you could put on the back of a windscreen to kind of nullify that I'll have to talk to Don about that at F4 Customs when I get to Wingding I should also mention my Bush Tech trailer is pulling flawlessly. I'm going to stop by and see those guys when I go to Wingding. And of course, I'll stop by and see John at Bike Solutions. He'll be there uh, modifying seats at Wingding. So if you want the Wingsoft upgrade for your 2018 motorcycle seat, uh, go by and see John at Wingsoft. He'll be there. So as you can see, the sun's coming up. It's really a nice morning. It's about 76 degrees. Not much wind, or if the wind is going with me, if it is. So just a beautiful morning to be out on the 2018 Goldwing. Now, I'll remind you again, if you like these videos, please take a moment, click that subscribe button down below. We love subscribers. And if you click on that little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I put out a new video. So appreciate all your comments. Again, if you're going to Wingding, uh, look me up. I'll be at, uh, plan to be at the Museum of the Appalachia Tuesday night. And uh, should have my Cruise Man's Garage t-shirt or one of my shirts on that has the logo on it. Of course, I always wear my cap. And I think I may have mentioned to you yesterday, I'll have a few of those caps with me. If anybody wants one, I've got them. They're like 20 bucks cash. And uh, we'll have those available. So right now, that's the only update. If something else exciting happens between now and the time I get to Alabama, I'll switch on the camera and record a little bit, tell you what's going on. I set up this route so that I would get to ride a little part of the Natchez Trace Parkway just because um, I did it years and years ago. So as you can see, I am entering the Natchez Trace right now. And uh, I think the speed limit here is only like 45 miles an hour. It's just a beautiful little ride, not very heavily traveled. And you can see the trees are just amazing in this section of the trace. Actually, there's a 50 mile an hour speed limit, so I didn't know it was that high here. Oh, see a little deer over here on the right. Got to watch for deer. It looked like a little one, but big enough to take out a gold wing. If you've never ridden the Natchez Trace, I highly recommend it. You know, it's just a very peaceful road, low speed, very little traffic. They don't allow any trucks or semis on here. It's just a very nice, relaxing ride. It just happens to be a beautiful day. No wind, clear skies, about 80 degrees outside, very comfortable, and I'm really enjoying my ride on the trace.
I'm here at Line Creek. This is one of the many historic uh, little pull-off areas you can see on the Natchez Trace. They're all over. Just about every few miles you'll find one of these. And it basically is a historic site that uh, will tell you the history of this particular area. And sometimes there's little walking trails. Uh, there's always usually a little picnic table or something. It's very peaceful, uh, beautiful trees all around. It's just a great place uh, to see when you're riding the trace. You just, you know, this is a place you come to when you want to take your time, enjoy the ride, and just kind of get away from it all. Pack a sandwich or a picnic lunch or, or just sit over here at the picnic table and enjoy a cup of water. I want to get down here where you can see my odometer. Hopefully with this wide angle lens you can see it. It's at $49.99. Soon to turn 5,000. So I'll always remember that my 2018 Goldwing turned 5,000 miles while riding the Natchez Trace. I think that's pretty cool. I think the last time I was on the Natchez Trace was back in 2006 on my 2005 Goldwing, the very first Goldwing I owned, pulling a Hannigan trailer. So it's been a while. So we'll see when this thing turns 5,000. Not very comfortable. I got my head shoved down into the dash practically. There we go. It just turned 5,000 miles. My Zumo is telling me that my ride on the Natchez Trace is about to come to an end in less than a mile. I've really enjoyed this respite from highway travel. It's just a great relaxing ride. But it's time to get on to Alabama. So I'll be picking up Mississippi Highway 8 and soon back up to speed on my way to the next adventure. Okay, Zumo is telling me to turn on to County Road 250, which is, I believe, this right here. There's no sign, so you just kind of have to trust the GPS. So now it's telling me I need to turn left on Scuffle Grit Road. I'm not kidding. I'm not making that up. And all I can hope is that it's a paved road. I do believe I told the Zumo to avoid unpaved roads. And this road that I'm on, this county road, is barely paved as it is. Gravel. I'm going to go this way. I know that's probably not correct. But, man, how many of you have ever ridden on Scuffle Grit Road? I think we may be about to run out of pavement here. And I don't know that I've got much choice but to go forward. It looks more like a gravel road or a dirt road than it does paved. Uh, I tell you what, if you want a technical road to ride, God, especially pulling a trailer, this is a pretty challenging road. This is called Scuffle Grit Road. Hope I can keep this thing upright. This is pretty thick gravel and dirt. And the worst thing you can do is hit the front brake because that wheel will turn in an instant. I don't think I've ever taken the trailer on a uh, gravel road before. At least not one this gravelly and this rough. It's a pretty rough surface. I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to keep my speed up enough because it gives you a little more stability. The problem is it's really a rocky road. They're, these are big rocks. These are not just little pea gravel. These are bouncing the front end around quite a bit. You know, the worst part, <laughs> if you ever drop your bike, the last place you want to drop your bike is on a dirt, sand, or gravel road because it's almost impossible to pick up if you're by yourself. If I can make it another eight-tenths of a mile, hopefully the next road will be paved. Now, 
making the turn onto the next road could be exciting. This is more along the lines of something you'd want to do on a KTM or a BMW GS because there are ruts where the rain has washed out the gravel and the dirt. Not fun. This was not in my ride plan. Surprisingly, the, um, ah, there's our road. It looks paved. Actually, surprisingly enough on roads like this, the trailer can actually be a help. It actually can uh, add a little stability. Now this is the challenging part because that tire wants to dig in and you don't have any grip. You don't have any way to put your feet down. My other problem is I can't see around the right curve here. There's a curve. So if anybody's coming around that curve, I'm just going to have to take a stab at it. There's no traffic right now. So I'm going to have to be careful getting off this gravel and onto that pavement. Once I'm on the pavement, I'm okay. That stop was fun, let me tell you. Okay, let's give this a try. Thank you. Of course a car, of course a car came around that curve right as I pulled out, but he was good enough to slow down and let me out. Okay, so. Why the hell I routed on that road, I'll never know. Well, now that I've escaped imminent death on the gravel road, I'm actually on a very nice little county road. Lots of trees, a few curves. That's all for now. Until the next motor vlog from Cruise Man's Garage.